I just think if you're going to try to make something healthy, don't eat pasta. Not that pasta isn't healthy. I mean, it's not, but we're eating pasta, okay? Hey everyone, I'm Claire. I am at home in my kitchen and today I am going to be making some homemade stuffed pasta. Making pasta at home, it does require a few steps and a piece of equipment, but you know, everyone being in the kitchen more, it's actually pretty doable. So up until recently, I found homemade pasta very intimidating. It was something I would watch chefs make on cooking videos. And then I kind of thought, figured it's just dough and um, you know, shaping them together. There's a lot of pastry skills that overlap, so I decided to try it and I thought it was actually really fun and more doable than I thought it was. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my flour and my eggs. This is just all-purpose flour, which is totally fine. Don't look in this fridge. This is a disaster. So I'm actually making a double recipe so I can have a lot of dough. This is a time where people are finding comfort in carbohydrates and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, so. I'm making a well in the center. I am going to add four eggs and 10 egg yolks. Again, this is a double recipe, so if you're making it at home, you're starting with eight ounces of flour and it's five yolks and two large eggs. All right, so this is gonna take me a second because I'm doing 10 of these. All right, so that is all the eggs. Obviously, that's a lot. So now with the fork, I can kind of start breaking up the eggs. And the well is just there to keep the egg contained. And the whole technique here is to incorporate more and more flour from the edges. And then you bring a dough together and start to knead. All right, I think I'm basically at the point where it's set enough. I can bring the flour back in and really start to bring the dough together. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of my fork. And now I'm really channeling cooks at home everywhere because this is not my area of expertise. But again, it's dough. So if you've worked with dough, if you've made bread before, you know, it's not, um, I actually think it's easier than that in a lot of ways. Now with pasta, the real idea behind pasta is that you want to develop as much gluten as you can. So working gluten, you know, all I'm really doing is kneading the dough until it's super, super supple and smooth, and that can take a long time. So what I like about fresh pasta is the act of making the dough. That's kind of why I'm making it. So this is the dough at the moment. It is a bit wet and sticky and not terribly smooth. I am just going to be here kneading it and adding flour little by little. I mean, not more than a pinch or two at a time until it's very smooth and supple. Now I actually need to cover it and let it rest before I can start rolling it out. So that's it. And so I'll let this rest 20 to 30 minutes and then once the gluten has relaxed a little bit, I can start rolling it out. So I just wanna show you what the texture of the dough actually looks like. Um, you can see on the surface there that there's these tiny little air bubbles and the whole texture is just very, very smooth and supple and satiny and that's kind of the best way to describe it. So. I'm kneading it, it's firm, but it doesn't really hold cracks, like it doesn't look dry. Um, and that's basically it. I don't want to explain the problem because it's embarrassing. How many days later, what is it, a week later? After much back and forth and looking back at all the footage, we confirmed we do not have a recording of me making the ricotta filling. So. I'm using whole milk ricotta. This is a pound of ricotta. I mean, it makes quite a bit of filling. Then it gets bound by one egg, and that is just to kind of keep it all together as it cooks. So I have some red pepper flakes, a generous pinch of that, because I like a little bit of heat. The ricotta is very mild, so using kind of a sharp, salty, flavorful cheese is a good combo. So I'm gonna use a little bit of garlic powder, which I think just doesn't quite have that raw burn and bite. So I'm gonna finely chop this parsley. Again, the herb piece is fine because I don't want like big shaggy bits that are gonna be hard to enclose in pasta. For a little bit of brightness, which is lovely, and I, I do happen to have a lemon here. While I have my microplane out, I'll throw in a little zest. I have just a little tiny, I guess it's a seed, nutmeg. And just this little rasp grater. I think you want kind of a mild, I mean, you, it should be well seasoned, but I think you want something creamy and a little bit mild so that you're not overpowering the rest of the dish. So I'm gonna transfer it to a pastry bag. I have like a million of these deli quart containers which are so convenient. This also helps eliminate air bubbles. When I make the agnolotti, you'll see I have to pipe a long, even tube of filling. And if there's air bubbles, it causes a break and it's just not quite as um, easy to work with. And then there it is, all evenly filled, 
just a little air pocket out at the bottom, but that's okay. It stays in place because I haven't cut the end and then it's ready to be filled. All right, now I'm gonna travel back in time and show you how to make the filled pastas that I actually did one week ago. Here is the dough. You can get a nice close look at it. It is firm, but still soft. You can see how it kind of holds an impression on my finger. So right here I have my KitchenAid mixer, which has a, an attachment that goes into the front of the mixer. And you turn on the mixer, it spins the wheels of the attachment and it's basically two rollers that I can adjust the thickness and it makes beautiful sheets of pasta. You don't have to have a KitchenAid to do this. There are great models that just kind of anchor to the countertop and they're hand crank. Those are great too. This is, as I said, a double batch of dough. So I'm going to divide in half and then into thirds. So you can roll the pasta by hand. That is not something that I'm going to opt to do because it does take, I think, quite a bit of skill and practice to be able to roll out such an even large sheet. Make sure that you're getting really squared off sheets of dough. I think it helps to kind of arrange the dough into a rectangle from the start. And then I'm gonna start rolling. So I just pass the dough through the roller and I do it several times on the widest setting. You can see that it already sort of turned into more of an oval shape. I fold the ends together like this and kind of mush them. So you'll notice on the first couple times when you pass it through that the dough kind of gets a rough texture. That's normal. Now that I've rolled it out several times and the dough has a nice even consistency, I'm just going to keep going one, one setting at a time. Okay, so I'm getting toward the thinner side. And this is about as manageable a size as I have found it comfortable to work with. I don't want to have like a, you know, an eight foot long thing of dough. This is seven out of eight in terms of level. And I also want to make sure that I'm getting the dough to start feeding through the machine all at the same point. Okay, so there we go. I am going to turn off my mixer and I'm going to cut the dough in half, actually. I'm gonna eyeball halfway. Okay, so for ravioli, I am going to start to pipe. Not too big, really. Maybe I would call that a tablespoon. Okay, so I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 that I've piped. To seal the dough, I just use water and I just spritz kind of all across one side of the dough. And now I'm gonna lay the second sheet of pasta over the first, just gently draping. And I think the trick here is not to stretch the dough too much, not to really stretch it over the filling, but to let it drape itself. Right here I have an air bubble, but if that's the case, my little cake tester. What you can do is actually burst it and then get the air out and then pinch it back together so that the dough seals. I'm just going around each one and pressing out all of the air. Now I have this fluted cutter. It's a fluted pastry wheel or sometimes they call it a pasta wheel and I'm pressing really firmly and the fluted edge is there to really crimp the layers of pasta together and seal them. If you have a little round cutter like this it's a fluted cutter, but I'm actually using it for the dull edge like that. You can use this to mound the filling. You kind of work it very gently around the filling and that pushes the filling into a nice even circle. I also think it helps to press out the air. So it gives, I think, a very finished, like professional look to the ravioli. So here's one and hold it up to the camera. You can see it. So cute. So the idea for this next step is to let them dry out a little bit. And at this stage, once they're dried out, you can also freeze them. So this is a great thing to use to stock your freezer a little bit. So the second shape I'm gonna show you is Anya Lodi. Again, just myself learned how to make these. So I feel like we are in it together. Same process of rolling out the dough. I'm going to move my roller back to the widest setting. I found it helpful to use the back of your hand to hold, catch the pasta because your fingertips are less likely to want to poke through the dough as it gets thinner. Anya Lodi. I just learned this shape and I fell in love with it. It's so fun to make. So I'm going to cut these in half lengthwise because I really only need a two inch wide strip. I'm going to take my filling, which has that same size opening. It's probably like a half inch opening that I snipped. And I'm going to pipe a snake of filling all the way across. All right, so I am applying even pressure to the piping bag and piping a long snake of dough. I mean of dough, sorry, I keep saying dough, of filling. Now, my spray bottle. 
just to the dough, sticks to itself. And I'm going to fold from one side over the filling so that it meets the other side. Like I did for the ravioli, I wanna press out any air, so I'm going to run my finger alongside. Okay, so now here's the fun part with Agna Lodi. I am going to pinch to basically squeeze the filling from between the pieces of dough, and I'm gonna make like little cute purses. So now, with my cutter, I'm going to trim off this rough edge and make it nice and straight. So now, the last step in forming the onion lodi, I'm going to use the cutter to cut in between each little area where I pinched. One thing I was doing that's helpful is to kind of press each little onion lodi down so that there's contact with that lip of dough. This is an onion lodi shape. You can see it's like this little purse with that little lip. And, you know, similar to a ravioli. So there they are next to the ravioli. I didn't think you need to see me roll out the dough a third time. So I have the same thickness of pasta dough rolled out. I'm gonna show you the third shape, which is mezzaluna. I'm going to just pipe similar sized mounds of dough as the ravioli. Okay, now same as the ravioli, a little spritz. And now instead of putting a second sheet on top, I'm just gonna fold the dough over. Okay. I'm using this smaller cutter to just form the filling into like a little, its own little half moon shape. I also poked a tiny little hole in between each mound of dough and that is just helping me eliminate all those air pockets. This is a larger fluted cutter. So now I'm going to basically use half of the cutter to punch out these little half moon shapes. One thing if you want edges to seal when you're cutting is press down and then once you hit the surface, twist. And basically you have a mezzaluna, a little half moon. You can see that, very, very cute. Okay, so I made three shapes of pasta with one filling and one dough. I made mo most of the annulotti, so I'm gonna cook some of those. So I'll do, you know, a handful of these guys. Pasta going in. So I have a little bit of water in this skillet and I'm adding some little pieces of butter. I didn't use salted water here, but it is salted butter. So you can see it's just really simple. And I'm gonna add the pasta. You can turn off that water, really kind of bathe it in. All right, so here's my little Anya Lodi swimming around in their bath of butter. Into the shallow bowl, a little squeeze of lemon, tiny bit of salt, why not? So here is this beautiful, fresh, Homemade pasta, agnolotti, with ricotta filling. Mm. So good. What I think is fun about making pasta at home is there are really kind of endless variations that you can try. I also think that it is a relatively forgiving process. I think one thing to remember is when you're making pasta at home, even if your raviolis open up, or your pasta's a little wet, it's gonna be fine and it's gonna be delicious in the end anyway, even if it's not perfect. It's really just there as a fun activity. And if they're not perfect, it's fine. These are just the most delicious little buttery pillows. They're so good. They're slamming. You're gonna put that in there, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> So actually one thing that I keep right here that I use all the time in the kitchen is a little spray bottle of water. I also use it to spray my cat when he's on the countertop because that's not allowed. But I also use it in cooking. You guys, my cat is literally glaring at me. He's, I wish you could see it. He's glaring at me. He's so mad. I think because he saw me pick up the water bottle. He does not like this. If I, if I point this at him, he'll run away. He looks. Yeah, he ran away. When the pasta is being boiled. You guys, the cats are freaking out. Felix! I have to spray them. Felix, stop it. Kitty. If I show him the spray bottle, spins and stuff. Kitty. But yeah, now he's freaked out. They don't get along. It's really been tense in this house. Okay, I'm done.